Welcome. Today we're going to speak about neglected tropical diseases, or NTDs as they're called. By the time this session is over, you should be able to speak comfortably about the definition of a neglected tropical disease, the burden of some of the most important NTDs, who is most affected by these diseases, the risk factors for the burden of neglected tropical diseases, and steps that can be taken to reduce the, the, the neglected tropical disease burden. Let's turn to our students for some help in understanding several key terms that relate to the NTDs. Yafet, what's an NTD? Yeah, so it's a group of parasitic and bacterial infections that are mainly prevalent in tropical and subtropical areas. Excellent. And um, Vivek, who do these diseases largely affect? Uh, they largely affect people as yeah, if it's in tropical and subtropical areas and people who often don't have good access to healthcare services as well. And are these usually better off people or less well off people? No, less well off people. Some people talk in fact about the NTDs affecting the bottom billion, the poorest billion people in the world. And in fact about one-sixth of the people in the world are infected with one or more of the NTDs. And Rachel, why are these diseases called the neglected tropical diseases? Because until fairly recently, very little attention has been paid to the NTDs, especially in terms of research. Uh, yeah, and, and probably, uh, if I might, also in terms of practice and efforts to address them, though that has greatly increased in the last uh, decade uh, plus. Now let's look at the burden of the neglected tropical diseases. Indeed, the World Health Organization now classifies 17 different diseases as the neglected tropical diseases. Here is the list of them, and I want to encourage you with the help of the websites of the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Global Network on Neglected Tropical Diseases, or the World Health Organization, to explore these by going into those websites and looking up the individual diseases, you'll find an interesting account of each, uh, of each one of them. Now let's look now at the burden of some of the most prevalent of the neglected tropical diseases. And here what you see is that there are more than a billion people, more than one billion people, and probably about 500 million young people are infected with one or more of the neglected tropical diseases. And here what we see is uh, one um, of the NTDs itself, roundworm, infects itself about a billion people. We see some of the other soil transmitted helminths infecting around 700 million people. And even here when we talk about lymphatic filariasis or elephantiasis, we're still looking at a world in somewhere around 40 million people are infected. Now, in, in, um, let's look for a second at the endemicity of these diseases and the countries in which you find them. And here what we see in this graphic is a map that shows the different endemicity scenarios. And that is countries in which one might five, five or six or seven or more of these diseases to be endemic, to be found in those countries. And if Lindsay could highlight the countries in which you see five NTDs, these are the ones in green. And in yellow, we'll see the countries that have six NTDs. And in blue, we'll see those countries where, in fact, seven or more NTDs uh, can be found. And it's really important as well to understand how uh, widespread these diseases are and what a large share of some populations is infected. It's been estimated, for example, that about 75% of the school children in Rwanda uh, are infected with soil transmitted helminths, or the so-called wormy diseases. Now, there are a number of reasons why the neglected tropical diseases have been so-called you know, neglected. One of them is they affect such poor people who are often kind of, forgive my saying so, out of sight and out of mind by other members in society. But two, another important one is that these diseases aren't very often associated with deaths. However, they can cause an enormous amount of, uh, of illness and disability. 
And in fact, some have suggested that if we added up the disability adjusted life years caused by the most prevalent of the neglected tropical diseases, we'd end up, for example, with as many DALIs as are caused annually by malaria. Now, as I mentioned, these diseases tend to infect the poorest people in certain climactic zones. Women and children who live in unhygienic circumstances uh, and have limited access to safe water and sanitation are also more at risk. But pregnant workers, pregnant women, sorry, pregnant women, farm workers, and people who work around water are also at special risk. Now, the global health community has decided to focus its attention on seven of these diseases, given their prevalence and the manner in which they can be addressed. And let's look at them. These are roundworm, whipworm, hookworm, schistosomiasis, lymphatic filariasis, onchocerciasis, and trachoma. Without going into too much detail, let me comment very briefly on how these diseases are transmitted. The soil transmitted helminths uh, are transmitted when eggs pass from the host and feces and then are transmitted when humans ingest the eggs of the worms. Schistosomiasis is uh, transmitted when flukes infect freshwater snails. When humans come in contact with them, the fluke can penetrate the skin. Lymphatic filariasis, which is often referred to as elephantiasis, this disease that causes substantial swelling and sometimes horrible uh, swelling of the extremities, is spread when mosquitoes bite an infected person, ingest the larvae, and pass it on to the next person, to another, to another person. Onchocerciasis is spread in a similar way, but by black flies. And trachoma, which is a blinding disease caused by a bacteria, is transmitted when someone comes in contact with discharge from the eye or when flies do the same thing and then land on another person's eye. As I've mentioned already, the neglected tropical diseases or NTDs can have debilitating health, social, and economic consequences. And these, this graphic, for example, speaks just to some of the health impacts of these uh, few neglected tropical diseases. And here, I think the one with which people might be most familiar, again, is lymphatic filariasis. It can cause uh, exceptional swelling of not just the uh, limbs, but also of the genitals. But we also see trachoma, which can be addressed, as we'll talk about, with, with a um, very simple drug regimen, and yet causes blindness uh, and corneal scarring. And here we see some of the other health manifestations of these diseases, uh, again, often in ways that are disfiguring or disabling and cause a substantial loss of healthy life years. Now, in addition, because of some of the disabilities that this, these produce or the disfigurement that they can produce, it wouldn't be a surprise to you to note how stigmatizing some of these diseases can be as well. And the economic consequences of the NTDs are also very high. Uh, soil transmitted helminths, the wormy diseases, can affect child growth, attendance at, and performance in school. Regions severely affected by onchocerciasis had large numbers of blind people and a substantial part of their land area that they couldn't even farm, for example, because of the risks of getting onco and becoming blind. It's been estimated that trachoma alone which affects relatively fewer people than many of the other NTDs, causes almost a $3 billion a year loss in productivity. Now, some very important progress has been made against a number of the neglected tropical diseases, including the seven we've been discussing. In addition, guinea worm is on the verge of being eradicated and would be, uh, if it gets there before polio, only the second disease found in humans to ever be eradicated. Let's talk now about some of the basic approaches to how neglected tropical diseases are addressed before turning to one of the leading authorities in the world on NTDs for further comments on that topic. 
One of the basic principles of addressing NTDs has been mass drug administration. This is an approach in which drugs are given to people living in endemic areas, usually several times a year, to prevent their getting infected with the targeted NTDs. This is generally done in a community-based and directed manner. The idea is that mass drug administration over time, sometimes 10 to 20 years, will completely stop transmission of a disease. Another principle is to provide treatment on the basis of a map of the diseases that are endemic to an area. Earlier, different NTDs were usually targeted through separate programs. The idea now is to address NTDs through a coordinated rapid impact package. In this case, drugs are given out in a coordinated program at the community level, depending on the disease burden in a particular place. And let's look at a graphic of these so-called endemicity scenarios. So let's imagine, for example, Uganda and the districts of Uganda. And let's think of having mapped the different NTDs that are um, prevalent in different districts in that country. And here what we see is we've mapped them according to a number of different scenarios. If, for example, the district should only have soil transmitted helminths, these drugs, albendazole and mebendazole, would be given. If, for example, this is a uh, district that has soil transmitted helminths, lymphatic filariasis, and schistosomiasis, the appropriate drugs for that would be given. And if, unfortunately, it were a district that had soil transmitted helminths, lymphatic filariasis, schistosomiasis, and onchocerciasis, then another package of drugs would be provided to the people in those communities. A third important point to note is that the efforts to address neglected tropical diseases have been based on important partnerships between countries, their global development partners, and pharmaceutical companies. This is an interesting, important, and cost-saving model that has helped to enable the rapid impact package to be delivered for about 50 US cents per person per year. For insightful comments about how neglected tropical diseases can be addressed and the challenges of doing so, I'd like to turn to my friend, Dr. Peter Hotez. Dr. Hotez is the Dean of the School of Tropical Medicine at Baylor University. And among other things, he's one of the leading authorities in the world on neglected tropical diseases. And I must say that Dr. Hotez has also been a pioneer in work on NTDs and is one of the people who, in fact, caused the NTDs to be much less neglected than they were before. Dr. Hotez?